Okay, good morning to you all. My topic is uh, cybercrime in a world without borders. My name is Henry Osborne Kwashi from Ghana. I start with my abstract. Can you project it for me? Technology has, as we you know, has created a world governed by computers and computer network. Today, the world is a world of machines. The world of machines evolved 24/7, as you all know. And uh, we say this is uh, today. We say we call it a man-made world, a world without geographical borders. Technology has created a dynamic world out of nowhere. This dynamic world is called the cyberspace, a world without borders, a new world connected by means of computer network. We also say that it's a virtual space created by a network of computers. With cybercrime, in a world without borders, criminals now no need to be, to be an actual scene of crime. Uh, this advanced form of crime is perpetrated by means of computer networks. If you look at the keywords for my uh, paper, the cyberspace, borders, and cybercrime. If you look at the introduction, I mean, it says that cyberspace is a world created by the internet. And the world came, it came popular in the 1990s when the use of the net, uh, internet and networks and data communication kept on growing. And as I could see from the literature, um, the world, the first, uh, the world first appear, appeared in a novel of Romance of, by William Gibson with the time cyberspace. And with time, this had been a conventional means to describe anything associated with internet and any activity associated with the internet. So we found a lot of, been a lot of literature, a lot of research on cy uh, concerning the cyberspace. The people, in terms of the methodology, I, I, do, I, I did a comprehensive review of literature on the concept of crime in this cyberspace. That is uh, a, a digital space, a virtual space we call the world without borders. If you look at the literature, I try to compare the cyberspace and the physical world. And this I've used some map to, uh, some fig, uh, image to explain it. No matter the physical world that we know, we all live in, that is a political world. It's a world uh, with contours, with where we can see the climates, uh, we have the natural resources, people, etc. Et this is the natural speed, the physical space. But with time, cyberspace, which is a digital medium, is no more of this uh, form of that physical world. This is how the cyberspace now looks like. A uh, means of communication networks, which makes the world. That is how now the cyberspace now looks like. So we said it is a little, it is limitless and constantly changing the shape. As and when technology is introduced, the world could keep on changing the shape. Its attribute, it can also keeps on changing. That's how to keep on going. So that the physical world now is not static. It is now more very, very dynamic and undefined and exponential, as uh, the diagram uh, explains there. Then, with the introduction of cyberspace, it has introduced a new set of citizens. We we'll call them netizens. And now, once you go on online, as we are now online, we are no more, we are not Indians, we are no more Chinese, we are not a Ghanaian, we are not a netizen. Well, now we are connected by means of computer networks. That is how we all now be we are in this world then want to see how we are connected to the world now with the means of computer computers and modem i mean a simple computer uh, mobile phone now can, can can easily connect you to the world all like the conventional world where you need the means of airlines plane to travel to connect to the world today a simple mobile phone is enough to connect you to, pe to people in the other part of the world so you can see from this image this is how we are connected to the world the means of computer and uh, modem, you are connected. These groups of people here can see the picture. Just with a mobile phone, they are connected with people all over the world and they are chatting, doing business, to anything. As I'm doing now, I'm in Ghana, but I'm connected to all of you all over the world. That's how the, the new world of the cyberspace looks like. Now I want to look at the people, now I want to look at the crime issue now, which is the main text of my uh, research, my, of my article. So crime is now associated with the use of computers now. So the criminals have also now carried the activities also online. So cyber criminals are now cut out on the basis of the objectives. Now we have children between the ages of 8 and 18, all part of the cyber crime. But this, some of these group of children normally are there because they want to explore the world of technology. But by this art of exploration, the intent is 
engaged in cyber crime. Now we have professional criminals who are also taking their schemes of committing crime online. So this digital world, you know, we have a lot of softwares developed to perpetrate crimes. The crime ranges from stealing simple formation to uh, to, uh, to cyber terrorism. These crimes are committed 24-7, making it difficult to crack down on their activities. So rather that today, technology has made it easier for criminals to launch an attack from any part of the world with the means of a simple computer device. These attacks are launched by a launch at government <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> these organizations, security services, individuals, etc. So the difficulty in arresting and perpetrating cyber crime is a result of the different criminal laws and different in different countries. Okay, we go. So now this is a picture look at people behind the crime. Now the people are at any distance. So you can see at that distance they are perpetrating cyber crime. So now we look at the crime scene. Under the conventional crime scene, which is normally it's a place or a, a group of people. Today the crime scenes look like this. This is a, a typical example of a crime scene. A mobile phone suppose it's a crime scene. Even a modem, I mean it's a crime scene. I mean a chip in your phone, it's a crime scene. So now these are the things that uh, the police now look for in terms of cyber crime. Now let's look at the reason for the cyber crime. So cyber crime is promoted by various factors like new technologies, complexity, loss of evidence, etc. The computers are easy to assess by means of new complex technology. So if you look at what I have uh, here, I have practical uh, Excuse me. <clears throat> the account. Now we have these simple tools, the capacity to store data in a, a comparatively uh, a very small space. The computer has become so unique, unique catalysis of storing data in a very small space. Unlike those days, conventional. We well, need a lot of room to store space. Now, this small space, because people can easily carry information anywhere. Then we have the easy access. I mean, the problem encountered in, in, in guarding computer, uh, computer system from unauthorized access is that there's every possibility of breach, not due to human error, but due to complexity in technology. By security, <coughs> guarding logic, keyboard, etc. So it makes it very easy this day to access information. Then we have the complexity of computer coding. Now we have the millions of coding. So you do your work thinking you have secured the system. Another person comes to, to it, hacks it, and makes it uh, a dense set of vulnerabilities and mess up your system. So that also contributes to the reason for the cyber crime. Then the fourth, we have the negligence of even users. People cannot keep their password. I mean, people give their information easily online. So it becomes very easy for people now to trap people and rob them. Then we have the, the, the issue of the loss of evidence, as I said. The if the evidence now is so tiny, or the evidence can also be recited in somebody's country. You have a server, maybe you have a server, maybe in, in, in Guyana, I mean Ghana, somebody has done it in uh, Canada. Then the issue of getting access to evidence to persecute crime is now also becoming very difficult, and criminals are taking advantage because they know that getting evidence to perpetrate crime is difficult. Even if you know, if a virus uh, uh, program is an evidence in court, but how do you even get it? All these things become difficult in spite of cyber crime. Then, as a lot of that, we have had a lot of practical intellectual challenges. And the UN <coughs> has come up, have come up with some of these challenges. So this me look like laws, criminal justice systems are international and the corporations have no care pace with technological change. So we that the technology is moving faster in terms of uh, when it comes to law. Then the lack of global consensus of what type of conduct should constitute a a computer criminal, a, a computer uh, related crime is also another issue because you have different laws in different countries. Then the lack of global census on the legal definition of even a criminal conduct today as what constitutes a cyber crime. Then the lack of expertise on the part of the police, prosecutors, and the courts in also dealing with cyber crime. These things are giving cyber criminals a few days. Then the inadequacy of legal powers for investigation and access to computer systems, including. Uh, applicability of seizure powers. How do you seize and move them a mobile phone from somebody? How do you see somebody's chip? How do you take advantage of all those things? Then we have the lack of harmonization among nations in terms of the laws. Because we call this cybercrime a transnational crime. 
crime that uh, uh, transcends nations cross borders so we need, we need international uh, cohesion to fight this crime then we have the transnational character of many of the computer crimes because there are people who are doing them people anonymity create a lot of anonymity commit those crimes how do you proceed to, uh, uh, chase them the one is even come to fighting it as we found them we have the issue of the lack of extradition and mutual assistance treaties among countries to enforce them so that we can even transfer criminals to other countries to face persecution that's how it becomes also another challenge in fighting cyber crime then in conclusion what are we saying so in the foregoing analysis cyber space has no real connection with the real world so some people say is the continuation of the uh, world to infinity it cannot be divided on the basis of the physical boundaries as you saw with the normal physical world that we have beyond the cables telephone lines satellites and computers that are known as, as backbones the traditional laws because of many reasons cannot deal with the new challenges in the cyberspace the existing laws and regulation has its basis on the physical world that's what's happening but cyber criminal is promoted by the various factors like new technologies complexities and loss of evidence. The Thank you very much, Andrew. It was a very good presentation.